Okay, with the engine cover removed, you can see the four coil packs here. And uh, the first step is to remove the wiring harness from the coil pack. And I'm just going to squeeze down on this tab and kind of work the connector out. And then with the connector out, I'm just going to use my 10 millimeter socket to loosen this bolt. Put this over here so I don't lose it, and then this should just pull out. And you can see the, the coil pack there. And then of course the spark plug is down in there. There. Okay, so now I've got my uh, spark plug socket, uh, 5 8 size, and of course these spark plug sockets have a rubber grommet inside to help prevent the plug from breaking. Uh, you can use a regular socket, but uh, it's better to use the one with the rubber in, in it. Uh, so you get this down and seated and try and keep it fairly square so you don't snap the plug. And then that one seemed a little bit loose. So that's good. And we'll just back this out and pull the plug out. And there's the plug. And I'm just kind of looking at this plug here, if the camera will focus on it. Um, it actually doesn't look too bad, um, but these have been in here for about 45,000 miles, and I think they were rated for 50. So I'm going to go ahead and change them now while it's summertime and warm out, as opposed to trying to have to do these in the middle of winter or something. All right, just for comparison purposes, I've got the old plug on the left here and the new one on the right, and I ended up going with the same exact plug, the uh, BRK5EIX-11 from NGK. Uh, the ribbon plug, they seem pretty decent, and you can see there the, the electrodes, and uh, you know, again, the, the old one doesn't really look that bad, but uh, I'm just going to go ahead and change it anyway. Uh, Okay, I like to use a little bit of Never Seize. I've got this ancient can of, of Never Seize here that I've been using since I was a kid. But um, anyway, I'll put a little on the threads here, and I think this will this will help in the future um, if I ever need to get these plugs out of here again. Uh, it'll it'll help prevent the threads from binding up and whatnot in there. So I'll go ahead and paint a little of that on. And I just use a tiny little bit. You don't need a lot. Okay, so I'm going to put the plug in to the socket. And I like to make sure that's seated inside the rubber grommet. And then uh, just work this down in. And you want to be careful and make sure you don't cross-thread the plugs. It should thread in nice and easy. Um, you know, almost no resistance. And I just hand tighten that until it kind of bottoms out and seats on the uh, on the engine, and then just tighten it a little bit. Um, you don't want to over tighten a plug or it'll break. And that's probably enough. Um, you know, an eighth to a quarter of a turn. Uh, there's probably a proper torque spec for this somewhere, um, but I've always just kind of done it this way, and uh, they've been fine. Been fine. Okay, now I'll replace the coil pack, and that seats down in there. This has got a uh, kind of a rubber boot on there to help keep the moisture out. You want to make sure that's sitting flush against the uh, the valve cover there, and uh, also make sure that the the bolt hole is lined up. And uh, let's see. So now drop the bolt back in, find the uh, the threads and tighten this up and again this doesn't need a ton of torque on it either just get it kind of hand tight plus a little more and then reconnect the um, connector and that one's done so now uh, it's the same process for the other three okay that's it all the plugs have been replaced well, almost forgot gotta put the cover back on 
so it's just a matter of lining the cover up and tightening down the two uh, nuts here and then the, uh, the plastic clips in the back just push back on and uh, that's the end of it so hopefully uh, hopefully this video helps you uh, in some way and uh, thanks for watching